Hello everyone, Mitch Albers here. In this biocast, we're going to take a look at the details of what occurs between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. It's an in-between stage, what we call pyruvic oxidation. So pyruvic oxidation is pretty much uh, descriptive of exactly what we're going to do. We're going to oxidize the two three-carbon pyruvic acid molecules, which were the end products of glycolysis. So let's kind of take a look at where we're at here in cellular respiration. So recall that we just finished our discussion on glycolysis, where we took our six carbon glucose molecule and converted it to two three carbon pyruvic acid molecules. Okay, in the process we produced uh, two ATP molecules through substrate level phosphorylation. And uh, we are now uh, set to uh, venture into the mitochondrion and uh, eventually get into the uh, Krebs cycle, or what's sometimes referred to as the citric acid cycle. And uh, in order to get to the Krebs cycle, we have to go through this uh, conversion of the, the three carbon pyruvates to uh, acetyl. Okay, the acetyl is um, a two carbon molecule and it's going to combine with a coenzyme coenzyme which is called coenzyme A okay and the, the, the function of the coenzyme A is coenzyme A is simply going to be a shuttle and its role is just to shuttle the two carbon acetyl into the Krebs cycle because it's the two carbon acetyl that gets delivered into the, the Krebs cycle. It's not the full molecule acetyl coenzyme A, it's just the two carbon acetyl that goes into the Krebs cycle. So we're going to have to go through um, a number of items where we're going to oxidize our pyruvate. So you know oxidation means we're going to be taking things away. We're going to see things leaving those pyruvic acid molecules. Okay, so uh, a couple of things that we're going to be taking away is uh, carbon and oxygen in the form of carbon dioxide, which will diffuse out of the cell as a waste product. It diffuses out of our cells into our blood, and then our blood carries uh, deoxygenated blood that's high in carbon dioxide to our lungs, and that's where we exhale it as a waste product. And again, remember carbon dioxide is one of the uh, products of cellular respiration. So this is the first instance where we're going to see carbon dioxide produced. Okay. The other place where we're going to see the carbon dioxide produced is coming out of the, the Krebs cycle. And we'll, we'll discuss that in the next segment. Uh, the other thing that we're going to be uh, removing from our pyruvate are hydrogen atoms. And they are going to be removed by the action of our electron carrier NAD plus. NAD plus is going to come in and pick up those hydrogens and get reduced to NADH. And NADH is then going to go to this last step in the process, the electron transport system, or sometimes what we call technically oxidative phosphorylation. And uh, and we have, we'll have a separate uh, video segment that goes through the details of what happens during electron transport and uh, oxidative phosphorylation for the uh, production of ATP. But right now, we're transferring energy from our original glucose molecule to these electron carrier molecules for a, a further payoff in ATP energy later on. So we're, we're in this in-between stage of uh, glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, we call it pyruvate oxidation. So let's look at the details of what's going to happen here. So <clears throat> what we're looking at here in this diagram is that we're going to see the, the fate of just a single three carbon pyruvate molecule. Okay, so remember that there are two pyruvates produced at the end of glycolysis. So um, we're, we're in the cell we're out in the cytoplasm of the cell, 
We just finished glycolysis. And uh, we, we ended up producing this three carbon pyruvic acid molecule. Okay, the pyruvate will be transported into the mitochondrion. Okay, uh, and remember that the mitochondrion has two membranes an outer and an inner membrane. So the pyruvate will be transported across those two membranes into the mitochondrial matrix. And recall we our discussion of the matrix is this is a kind of a chemical soup. It's composed of a number of enzymes, electron carriers, ions, and water, and uh, all the uh, uh, enzymes for the uh, Krebs cycle, for instance, are located in this region of the mitochondrion. And uh, this is where the reactions uh, for pyruvate oxidation take place. So there are going to be three steps involved here. In the first step, we're going to see the removal of carbon dioxide. Okay, We can sometimes call this decarboxylation. Decarboxylation, the removal of carbon dioxide. So it, remember, we have two, we started with our two three-carbon pyruvates. All the original carbons from our glucose molecule were tied up in those two three carbon pyruvic acid molecules. So this is the first instance where we're actually removing uh, one of those carbons from the original glucose molecule along with two oxygens. And again, this carbon dioxide will be diffusing out of the mitochondrion, out of the cell, into the blood, transported to your lungs, and removed from your body as waste carbon dioxide. That's what we exhale. Okay, so this is we are oxidizing our pyruvate. First step, removing carbon dioxide. In the second step, we're going to be uh, further oxidizing the pyruvate by taking some hydrogens away from our pyruvate. And NAD plus, our electron carrier, in its oxidized form is going to come in, pick up those hydrogens, and get reduced to NADH. And we know the fate of NADH is that it's going to pick up those high energy electrons from those hydrogens and it's going to then carry those off to the third phase of cellular respiration, which will be electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation. Where we're going to get a further payoff in energy from those electrons that NADH is transporting. Okay, so those are the two instances of where we, we have oxidized our pyruvate. Now in the third step, this you can notice the arrow's coming in. And that's where our coenzyme A, we'll just call it COA, is going to come in and bind. So we, we removed uh, two, uh, remove, uh, removed a carbon uh, from our pyruvate molecule, and we end up then with a two-carbon intermediate that's called acetyl. Okay, and the two carbon acetyl is going to combine with this coenzyme A and it's going to produce what's called acetyl coenzyme A. And the acetyl is the two carbon molecule. The coenzyme A is simply going to be our shuttle. Its role, its job really is just to shuttle the two carbon acetyl into the Krebs cycle. Okay, so um, <clears throat> and so in this view, we we have just looked at the fate of a single pyruvic acid molecule. So everything that you see happening here is happening double time. Since there are two pyruvates produced at the end of glycolysis, everything we we see here is happening double time. So if we add it all up, totally we would produce two carbon dioxides. We would see two NAD pluses coming in and we would produce two NADHs at this step. We would see two coenzyme A's combining with the two acetyls that get produced, and, uh, and we would then see the production of two acetyl coenzyme A's at the end of uh, pyruvate oxidation, because we're eventually going to see two of these acetyl 
two carbon molecules getting shuttled into the Krebs cycle. Okay. So this is just that in-between step between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. And, and uh, once we get started with the Krebs cycle, we'll see the, uh, the shuttling action of the coenzyme A delivering the 2-carbon acetyl into the Krebs cycle. And that will be discussed in detail in the next uh, video segment that's on the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. So make sure you take a, a look at that video uh, coming up next.